You are watching the Canadian Public. Hello, I'm Francois Caron and welcome back to my dining room table. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Asus EPC900 computer. The EPC900 is a follow-up of Asus's extremely successful 700 series, which launched a new era of solid-state highly mobile computers. Along with the computer, the package also includes a system recovery disk and a driver disk for Windows XP, an owner's manual and a quick start guide, an extended flush-mounted battery, the power adapter, and a padded carrying pouch. The EPC900 features a mobile Intel Celeron M processor running at 900MHz, 1GB of upgradable DDR2 memory running at 667MHz, a fast 4GB capacity integrated solid-state drive, a slower secondary solid-state drive, an 8.9-inch 1024x600 resolution LCD screen, 802.11bg Wi-Fi support, and 24-bit audio support. At the front, we have a 1.3 megapixel webcam, the power button, status lights for the computer, and a mouse touchpad with rocker style mouse buttons. The touchpad includes two and three finger tap and movement support and requires no special drivers. On the left side, we have the ethernet jack, a USB port, the heat exhaust grill, and a microphone and headphone jacks. On the right side, we have an SD card slot, two more USB ports, and a VGA port. On the rear, we have the flush-mounted battery and the power jack. Underneath, we have the ventilation holes and the speaker grills. We also have two latches for the battery, in which only the left one is spring-activated, making it very easy to change the battery as well as protect against accidental releases. Inside, we have the standard notebook memory module and the secondary solid-state drive. The keyboard has all the keys you'd normally find on the notebook keyboard, with the exception of the right control key. The only standard keys that are double mapped are the page up, page down, home and end keys. The keys are larger than the keys on the Fujitsu Lifebook U810, but not by much, so touch typing may still be a problem. The EPC900's overall size is between the size of a sub-notebook computer and an ultra-mobile PC. It's much smaller and lighter than the sub-notebook, making it more convenient to carry around. However, it's also larger than a UMPC, meaning it might not fit in your coat pocket. The screen's brightness is rather weak. On the left, the EPC900 with its brightness set to 100%. On the right, the Fujitsu Lifebook U810 set to 50%. Outdoors, the U810 has room to spare. The maxed out EPC, however, looks dim even in the shade. The integrated 1.3 megapixel webcam delivers poor results, barely any better than the 0.3 megapixel webcam found on the Fujitsu Lifebook U810. Using this computer as a handheld mobile PC is more of a balancing act than anything else. This computer was designed to be used on a smooth surface and not in your hands. The manual also warns you against using it on your lap because of the heat. The Xandros Linux operating system is a frustrating operating system which lowers the computer's operating capabilities down to the level of a PDA. It isolates the user from the underlying system, making it impossible to install your own software. Even the ability to manually update applications such as Mozilla Firefox and OpenOffice.org have been disabled. Media playback under Xandros is not only horrible, the media player will also download any file that doesn't reside on the computer before playing it back. To top off Xandros' shortcomings, the Wi-Fi's WPA encryption doesn't work properly, leaving you with no access to secured wireless networks. I've then tried the Ubuntu EPC distro from ubuntu-eee.com. The WPA encryption now works, but the webcam doesn't, and neither do the specialty function buttons such as the volume and brightness controls. Ubuntu is also incapable of powering off the computer unless you manually modify a system configuration file to correct the problem. Media playback under Ubuntu is only slightly better than under Xandros, but only if you use the VLC media player, which unfortunately can't properly display software-based subtitle formats. I've then tried Windows XP. I couldn't get the webcam or the Wi-Fi's WPA2 encryption to work properly. Media playback, however, improved significantly. Not only did all of my standard definition material playback properly on the EPC900, but so did half of my 720p sample clips with very few dropped frames. Another pleasant surprise was with games. What? 
Moderate first-person shooters function reasonably well on this computer, but the frame rate can be a bit slow at times. On the plus side, the computer's graphic engine incorporates screen panning technology allowing you to play games that won't normally function at resolutions below 1024 by 768 pixels. I've then decided to take a step back in time and try Windows 2000. Suddenly, I now had a real computer that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Even the Wi-Fi's WPA2 encryption was working properly. The only component that didn't work was the webcam, which I never use anyway. Every operating system was tested with Mozilla Firefox and OpenOffice.org and everything worked as expected. One adjustment you'll need to perform on all operating systems, however, is to set Firefox's disk cache to 0 megabytes in order to avoid accessing the solid state drives unnecessarily, which can severely affect the playback of online videos from YouTube and other online video sites. The media playback test delivered a total running time of 4 hours on a fully charged battery under both Windows operating systems with the screen's brightness set to 100% and the Wi-Fi radio turned off. The screen's color fidelity is very respectable out of the box, requiring at most only a slight increase in the red channel's gamma setting. With the EPC900 resting on a smooth, hard surface, the sound quality from the built-in speakers is surprisingly good, rivaling the sound quality from even full-size notebook computers. Unfortunately, the maximum volume level is a bit low, both through the speakers and through headphones. System boot times varied quite a bit between operating systems. Both Windows XP and Ubuntu were the longest at about a minute, while Xandros was the shortest at 25 seconds. Memory usage after the initial boot was as high as 225 megabytes for Windows XP and as low as 150 megabytes for Windows 2000, which after some tweaks was able to accommodate my entire essential software collection on the tiny 4 gigabyte drive with room to spare. The EPC 900's major weakness, however, is the write speed of its solid state hard drives. Writing files to the fast 4GB solid state drive resulted in a transfer rate of up to 10 megabytes per second, regardless of the source. The slower 8 or 16GB drive had a write speed of up to 5 megabytes per second. Writing to either SD or USB memory resulted in an average transfer rate of about 3 megabytes per second. These results, however, varied wildly even from within the same operating system. One file transfer test between the solid state drives resulted in a transfer rate of only 2 megabytes per second, regardless of the direction of the transfer. My experience with the Asus EPC900 was a frustrating one. Granted, equipping this computer with solid state drive technology dramatically increases its chance of surviving the type of accidents that could easily destroy a typical mechanical hard drive. But I still had to go through four operating systems before I found one that not only met all of my needs, but could also exploit the computer's full potential and bypass its major shortcoming, namely, the inconsistent storage transfer rates. It's also important to consider that this market segment will soon be overwhelmed by similar mini computers, such as the HP 2133 Mini Note, the Acer Aspire 1, the MSI Wind, and Asus's own upcoming EPC 1000 series all of which will have street prices comparable or lower than the EPC 900's current street price of $550. So if you wait a couple of months, you'll have a much wider selection to choose from. That's it for the Yesus EPC 900. I'm Francois Caron. Thank you for watching.